Hey guys, Richard from Nexus Core, gonna bring you my updated Gold Paladin Gurgit deck profile. So I've been really excited to show you guys this one. This is gonna be my updated deck from GBT10. And yeah, let's just, just get right into it. Starters starting up, we got uh, our usual Night of Early Dawn Coel, because uh, yeah, Coel is great. Um, Coel, you know what it does, Unite, move to soul, you know, look at top three, call something, gets 2k. Yeah, we're just gonna keep that, keep our soul filling. On to the grade threes. Let's just start off with our new guy, uh, Knight of Holy Sword Gurgit. So, Holy Sword's skill is uh, Generation Break 2. Uh, when he's in Unite, all your rear guards get uh, intercept, and they also uh, have the ability to intercept from the back row. And his stride skill, is uh, Canvas 1, Soul Blast 1, so they had a Soul Blast to the skill. Uh, look at top 4, call a unit, no power ups this time. And uh, if you call the unit with the Unite ability, you can look at the top card of your deck and call it as Rest. So this is nice because it gives you instant Unite with the Stride skill right away, which uh, I've had games where that was kind of a problem where getting into Unite, especially for the final push of the turn, was a little hard, but uh, thanks to um, Thanks to Holy Sword, it's gonna be a lot easier from now on. Next up for our grade threes, we're gonna make this a pure Gurgit deck. So we're running eight Gurgits total. Next up being our original uh, Sunrise Rain Knight Gurgit. So you already know what he does. GB2, Caramelus 1, Soul Plus 1, top four, call something to guard circle, and his stride skill is Caramelus 1, look at top four, call something to rear, it gets plus 2k. You know, I've had this card for two years now. So we're still gonna run all four of each Gurgits. Next up for our grade twos. I'm only running two copies of uh, Knight of Daylight Canarius. Canarius' skill is um, if I have a Vanguard with Gurgit in its name and I'm in Unite, he gets plus 4K. And his generation break skill is I choose a card from my hand and discard it for the cost. When he's placed, I discard one card from my hand and I look at the top three cards in my deck, uh, pick one among it, call it, rest go to bottom. So um, I don't really like discarding as much in this deck, but I like having more options for superior calling throughout the game. So I'm running him at two for now. Next up for grade twos, we're uh, still keeping Paramour. So Knight swings like Paramour. We've had him for about a year now, I think. I want to keep Paramour because I like just the simple call, counterblast call something kind of like Aglavale except it sucks that he's restricted to just his column so but I also like just the unite plus 2k because sometimes I can go early with uh, calling Paramore and then calling Scarface line behind it attacking for 15 early if my opponent's at grade 2 and I'm at grade 3 I like running uh, Paramore uh, next up for grade 2's I dropped Hand or Knees down to 2 from my last build if you want, you can go watch my last build and you can see the differences and changes I made. Henry's used to be at three, put him down to two. Um, only thing about Henry's that I don't really like is he doesn't have the Unite ability. And Unite is kind of key in the new Gurgit deck, especially um, since like you're playing an extra Soul Blast for the cost. But I've also found recently with, with testing this deck is that the if you do have to call Henry's is not really that much of a minus because you do actually build up a lot of soul in this deck pretty quickly. So soul blasting is not that terrible, especially since now we're not sitting on Ray, uh, Sunrise Ray Knight Gurgit. I'm not thinking, no, no, my soul blast for defense because now we got Gurgit GB2. It's like, well, I don't want to worry about my soul blast for defense. And uh, paying for stride skill every turn is not hard at all. So paying with a soul blast for Hermione's is really easy. And I still like Hermione's buffs up stuff that he calls. Keeping him at two. If you remember my last deck, it had a lot of grade twos, so I'm still keeping the same thing, especially with uh, Holy Mage Poil. So Poil's our Amber Clone. Uh, he is not really necessary, I would say. Poil is more kind of like a luxury. He's, when you boost, you attack the Vanguard, Counterblast one, look at top three, call in it. So he's battle phase attacks, get you off Gets off more attacks, combos off the Horsa, gives more pokes, because this meta is all about pokes and hitting for multi-attacks. And uh, yeah, he's nice. He's not 
it's like if I he's not like a main target like if I'm like oh I need to see Puel so I still like to run him I want to keep him in the deck so I'm going to keep him that too and lastly for our grade twos this is what's a little different I'm running three copies of Bowler Goal now the reason I'm still running Bowler Goal in this deck is because I I just uh, I was thinking about running four um, while I was trying to build this deck is because um, Heavenly Law, Gurgit, gives plus 2k to the field when he's your first stride. And if you can pull down Buller Goal, like, as just one column by himself, he's still hitting for 16. So, you're able to give your opponent, make your opponent drop 10k, uh, shields just with one card, which is really, really, really nice. I just like being able to see it, especially since he has the United ability. So if I call him with Gurgit, uh, with a Holy, uh, Holy Sword Gurgit, I can still uh, get off the ability of calling an extra card to pull off Unite. So I just think Bullergirl is a really Bullergirl is a really good card to run, especially with the new Gurgit and with Heavenly Law Gurgit. I I wanted to run four, but I decided to keep it at three just to keep the consistency throughout the deck. So that's all for grade twos. Let's just get right into the grade ones. So I'm running three copies of um, Sunrise Knight Jeffrey. With uh, before what I used to do, I my first build around four. Then I realized uh, I'm drawing way too much. Um, in my glorious reigning build from uh, GB8, GBT8, I ran two copies, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, this time I'm just, I took out Malagant completely because we do have to soul blast with Gurgit skill and soul blasting too. Um, just for the unflips is nice, but it's I'm kind of losing resources there, especially to do Henry's and Gurkit's skill if I want to the same turn. So I decided to trade off Malagant for an extra draw. And you also notice I took out Marsha in the deck. So our our only unflip engine is actually Jerry, but after using it, we don't really have an uh, an unflip problem as much in this deck because of Glorious Reigning. So. Being able to soul charge and draw frequently is very nice in this deck. And of course, we can't make dung combo plays without Knight of the Morning Light Horsa. So Horsa's skill is uh, Unite GB1. Uh, when your other unit is placed on rear, you choose him and another unit in the same column, and they both get 2k. So if you go like, you know, call, call and then Unite, something here gets 2k. So like, say this isn't Horsa. So we got uh, 2k, 2k, call something else, 2k, 2k, so just plus 8k, 8k to the column. Which is really nice, because you can just call stuff and there's just the columns beefing up. Have Glorious Raining there, you know, call three things, this column just got plus 12k. So, really, really good card to run in Gurgit. Highly recommend, especially if you're running Glorious Raining. Next up for our grade wins, we're running, obviously, four Stride Fodders. Uh, still keeping the... Uh, Alt art because you know I, I want to run the alt arts if I can in this deck. I just want to run it. I don't care if it's common. So stride fodder, you know it does searches for a gurgit unit, but we're not really too worried about that anymore because now we have eight gurgits in the deck. Yay! All right. Next up, we are going to be maxing out the new PG Holy Mage Alicia. Now I know the gurgit deck has a lot of like counter blasting going on. It's just I feel that's because um, Holy Sword Gurgit gives you an additional call for free if you call a Unite unit, you're not using up too many counter blasts to fill your field. So in fact, your field stays pretty consistently filled with minimal counter blasts. So I feel like I don't have to run Bridery anymore for unflips. And what I really, really like about Alicia's skill is that she helps with the deck out problem meaning that, you know, she can put cards back in the deck. So she has the, the generic, when your vanguard's being attacked, put this down, discard one, nullify the attack. Her other skill is Unite. When she's placed in the guard circle, you can take one of your guards, put it on the bottom of your deck, and she gains plus 15k shield, which is basically a, a G Guardian, in a sense. So you can just put this down from your hand, Take one of your rear guards from the bottom of your deck and plus 15k shield. So if you just need a 15 shield and you don't want to really use up a PG, you can just put this down and save hand. So another problem with this deck is that because both Canarius and Heavenly Law discard, hand is kind of a problem sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. That's why we're running Jeffrey to 
move in the soul and get draws. Having the ability to just throw this down and not have to throw down an additional card to protect myself is what I really like about Alicia, so I want to see it more often. And also it's a unit with Unite, so it goes off with Gurgit's skill. Let's move on to our triggers. So I'm still keeping the same trigger lineup as the last deck, so I'll just make it really simple for y'all. It's uh, four Scarface Lion, three uh, Flame of Victory. The reason the reason I'm doing seven crits is because I'm decided I'm still running five draws, and I'll get right into what the other triggers are soon. So you know, Flame of Victory, Marco Clone moves Soul plus three K. Scarface Lion is our Heart Thump Worker Clone. If you have a Gurgit Vanguard, which we will. There's like no way we won't have a Gurgit Vanguard unless we don't ride to grade three. Uh, Mood to Soul plus 5k. So for our other triggers, we're running four copies of our only unflip engine in the deck, other than uh, Glorious Raining. Four copies of uh, Player of the Holy Pipe Jerry and one copy of Gigantic Ringer as a tech. I still want to use Gigantic Ringer because it is a recyclable trigger. I don't want to drop, drop my triggers, or my critical triggers I mean, specifically down to six in order to bring my stands up to six, like add in an additional ringer. The reason I don't want to do that is because stand triggers are nice and there are moments when I'm like, oh, I wish I got a stand. It's just that I tend, personally, this is just me, I tend to be too dependent on them and I go, oh, I run six stands. I need to see one now or I should see one now. And if I don't and I see crits, I get kind of disappointed. So I like being able to have the ability of you know, still having the pressure of like somewhat kind of like eight crits with seven, I'm still gonna see crits more often. So if I can apply those to rear guards more often throughout the game, I'm gonna be applying probably more pressure to my opponent. I just like Ringer because it's really cool. You get a draw and it's recyclable. And lastly for triggers, four heal triggers, keeping Curable Angel. So that's really fun. Now let's just get on to the fun part, which is our G units. We are running four copies of Holy Sword of Heavenly Law Gurgit. This is the probably the best part about the whole gold new gold paladin deck. And by that I mean is the fact that we can get to GB2 without a by our first stride guaranteed. My with my original uh, Glorious Reigning build, the first stride was always um, Rising Shine Dragon. I always wanted I wanted Rising Shine to hit and my main problem was that people stopped letting it hit Because they realized how much of a plus I got off of it and the main the main reason I ne uh, Needed Rising Shine to hit was so I could be at GB2 at the end of my turn So that I can go into Glorious Raining the second stride. So but with uh, Heavenly Law that's guaranteed. So Heavenly Law's skill is once per turn act Countless one, flip a copy of himself face up and discard, which is kind of sucks, but makes sense with the cost. Um, so we're losing hand. His skill, he gains red tech skill. When he attacks, you look at the top seven cards. So we're getting the, looking at seven cards again. Um, you pick one from among it, call it. And then his other skill is that um, continuous, all your units. Uh, gain 2k for each face-up unit with Gurgit in your G-Zone. So this applies to him, and this also applies to Radiant Sword Gurgit. So, you know, your first stride, all your rear guards are getting plus 2k. If you go into him the second time, all your rear guards are getting plus 6k. So he he's incrementing and beefing up as the game goes on, but he's definitely the first stride. I technic typically don't really go into him after that that much later in the game. I usually either finish it with Glorious Reigning or um, Radiant Sword Gurgit, but having four, I like it because that way if I really do want to get an extra on attack call something, I have the option to. So I'm gonna, gonna run this at four. Next triple rare is my four copies of Golden Dragon, Glorious Reigning Dragon. The finisher, the guy who is basically winning all my games with this deck. So Glorious Reigning skill, you should all know it because it's so terrifying. It's on attack, flip up a copy of himself, take two of your regards, put them on the bottom of the deck, look at the top seven, again, and call up to the same number of copies in your face-up G-Zone. Kind of like Spirit Cross, but better. Basically me saying stop running Spirit Cross, everyone. And if you call three or more rear guards with his skill, you can counter charge and soul charge, repaying his cost and gaining you soul. So you're gaining soul for Gurgit, stride skill, 
you're unflipping for costs, so it means you're not having to counterblast as much throughout the game, and you're overall gaining pluses with this card. This is why this card is getting expensive. I'm so sorry for you new players who want to play Gurgit and really want to run this card but don't want to drop 100 bucks. This card is amazing. Next up for our G units, I am running two copies of Sunrise Radiant Sword Grigget. Now before I go into talking about the card, I just want to mention I either use this card once or not at all. Why I'm running two copies, I initially thought I might use it once and want to do it again. I own two, so why not put in the second one? But honestly, I feel like I could run something else in it, like maybe a G unit that might be more practical for situations such as if I don't have counter blast at all, I can run maybe like build build peak dragon, which is just place and at the end of turn if I'm unite, I can unflip and soul charge and gain bonus just to strike. You know, I don't want to really make a big play this turn or whatever. It happens, you know. I'm running two because who knows, maybe I might go oh, Radiant Sword. Oh man, I wish I could Radiant Sword again, so let's do it again. So the skill is Counterblast 1, Soul Blast 2, all, if I'm in Unite, all my rearguards gain 5k and he gets plus 5k for each of my rearguards. So really, 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 really big columns. If you remember that game against Miles, that was literally the reason why I won that turn, was because of big numbers. Speaking of big numbers, we're running one copy of uh, Golden Dragon Scourge Point Dragon. So he is our tech G unit because there are some times when, like I said, I want to be at GB2 at the end of my opponent's turn, at least, so that I can go into Glorious Raining my second stride. But if I have a heal trigger in my hand, I might want to go into Scourge Point just so I can maybe go stride, stride skill, call something, 5k to Scourge. Uh, I call the Unite unit, call another thing as rest, another 5k to Scourge Point. So Scourge Point will just be gaining power. So he's either a, a guaranteed hit or a PG early. So, and it's also maybe I don't want to discard from my hand for Heavenly Law, and but I do have the heal trigger so I can be a GB2, I can go into Scourge Point as my first stride. That's that's a pretty ideal first stride for Scourge Point. Also, if I don't want to use too much counter blaster in the game, he's a good tech, good guy to run. Scourge Point is probably yet to let me down so far at, from owning this deck of all these years. Lastly, for G uh, units, Heirloom and Seabreeze, you know, grade 2 game, or if your opponent doesn't find a grade 3 and you just want to be an asshole and just go, boop, I can stride, triple drive, cool. Y'all know what Seabreeze does. But anyways, our G Guardians are the same. We're running one Rhea, two Slimy Flare, and one uh, Screw You. So, uh, from the last video, I mentioned this before, I prefer Screw You over Dismal in this deck because uh, Rhea's skill and Slimy Flare's skill only activate if you have rear guards at all. Rhea needs two rear guards, Slimy Flare needs at least one. And if your field is either empty or locked, this, these, and a Dismal won't help you. They're just gonna be 15K vanilla shields. So I like Screw as an option in case um, my field's empty, but I need like a, a 25k shield, you screw you. I'm really excited for that new G Guardian that's going to be coming out Fires Collection, where it's just plop it down, flip up a G unit, look at the top two, call one to G Guard, and then if the guard was successful, I get to call a unit to rear. So that, that means if my field's empty, I can set up for Slimy Flare again, or use um, Pete the Alicia's skill to put in the bottom and gain shield, or use Gurgit's GB2 to intercept with it. It's just going to be a great card and it's going to replace Screw. So, you know, Rhea's skill is if you have two regards, she gets plus 5k shield. And Slimy Flare's skill is uh, pick one of your, when it's placed in the guard circle, pick one of your regards, put it on the bottom of the deck, look at the top five, pick two if they're of different grades, call in the guard circle. So, you're typically going to make a 41 or um, a blah, 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 30, 30k shield make. Uh, counting your vanguard's base would be 41k total defense. So basically, this is going to be your big numbers right here. So and then is going to be guarding the really big attacks throughout the game. So that was my updated GBT 10 Gurgit deck. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm having a lot of fun with this build, and I hope uh, this helped you 
add some, make some changes to this build. You can really mold it to however you want, especially with your grade twos and a little bit of your grade ones. I highly recommend keeping horse at least at three though. So I hope you really all enjoyed it. Again, I'm repeating myself, trying to find the card to make the end of this video look cool. But yeah, um, hope you all enjoyed. I'm Richard from Nexus Core and I'll see you all later.